Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all our Guru Maharajas. Um, Maharaj. Hare, so, Hare uh, Krishna, my obeisances to you and to all the devotees. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, the only, there is one thing I should mention. I've been having trouble staying on the internet with my connection here. It keeps jumping off. So uh, if that happens, just give me a minute and I'll be back. I just have to keep reconnecting. Let's hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj, that shouldn't be a problem. Devotees, just for our kind information, we'll proceed with Canto 5, Chapter 24, verse number 19th and 20. Maharaj, whenever you're ready, you may take over. Hare Krishna. Again, we have the... Uh, we have the... Uh, Hmm. Oh, can't think of it. It's not the Sanskrit, but it's the it's Sanskrit, but it's called the uh, oh, prose. The prose, yeah. Thank you. Um, so we'll uh, we'll go right to the translation. Uh, <laughs> Om namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So Canto 5, Chapter uh, 24, verses 19 and 20. This is verse 19. My dear King, Bali Maharaj donated all, donated all his possession to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vamanadeh. But one should certainly not conclude that he achieved his great worldly opulence in Bilva Swarga as a result of his charitable disposition. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is a source of life for all living entities, lives within everyone as the friendly super soul. And under his direction, a living entity enjoys or suffers in the material world. Greatly appreciating the transcendental qualities of the Lord, Bali Maharaj offered everything at his lotus feet. His purpose, however, was not to gain anything material, but to become a pure devotee. For a pure devotee, the door of liberation is automatically opened. One should not think that Bali Maharaj was given so much material opulence merely because of his charity. When one becomes a pure devotee in love, he may also be blessed with a good material position by the will of the Supreme Lord. However, one should not mistakenly think that the, that the material opulence of a devotee is the result of his devotional service. The real result of devotional service is the awakening of pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which continues under all circumstances so i just want to make one comment on that that the uh, if there is some favor shown to the to the devotee by the lord it's not because of you know his charity or anything he's done on the material level it's because krishna just wants to show his appreciation his love for his devotee so he may offer some material opposites, some good material position, just to uh, show his love for his devotee. It's not because of anything else. It's simply because of Krishna's kindness towards that soul. Okay, verse 20. <laughs> If one who is embarrassed by hunger or who falls down or stumbles chants the holy name or the Lord even once, willingly or unwillingly, 
immediately freed from the reactions of his past deeds. Karmis entangled in the material activities face many difficulties in the practice of Mr. Yoga and other endeavors to achieve that same freedom. Purport, it is not a fact that one has to offer his material possessions to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and be liberated before he can engage in devotional service. Very important statement too. It is not a fact that one has to offer his material possessions to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and be liberated before he can engage in devotional service. A devotee automatically attains liberation without separate endeavor. Bali Maharaj did not get back all his material possessions merely because of his charity to the Lord. One who becomes a devotee, freed from material desires and motives, regards all opportunities, both material and spiritual, as benedictions from the Lord. In this way, his service to the Lord is never hankered, hampered. So, hampered. What he, we see here is that uh, one should use their material possessions in the service of the Lord because that is a way to serve the Lord. It's also a way to sacrifice one's attachment to enjoying those material possessions. But this is not the prerequisite for attaining perfection in life, although it is a means for serving the Lord. Mukti, material enjoyment, and mukti, liberation, are only byproducts of devotional service. They're not, they're not the, they're not the uh, benefit of devotional service. A devotee need not work separately to attain mukti. Srila Bhilva Mangala Thakur says, Mukti Swayam Mukundital Mukundli Tanjali Seva Te Sman. A pure devotee of the Lord does not have to endeavor separately for mukti because mukti is already there to serve him. In this regard, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Antya 3177-188, describes Haridas Thakur's confirmation of the effects of chanting of the holy name. So now you'll see these verses are being narrated. Keha bali nama hoite haya papa shaya. Keha bala nama hoite jivera moksha hoya. Some say that by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one is freed from all the reactions of sinful life. And others say that by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one attains a liberation from material bondage. Haridasa kahena namera e dui fala naya kamera fala krishna pada prema upajaya Haridasa kor Bring it down again. I can't see the whole thing. Okay, leave it there. Haridas Thakur said that the desired result of chanting the holy name of the Lord is not that one is liberated from material bondage or free from the reactions of sinful life. The actual result of chanting the holy name of the Lord is that one awakens his dormant Krishna consciousness, his loving service to the Lord. Anu Sangika Fali Namera Mukte Papa Nahasa Tahara Dristanta Yaiche Sudera Prakash. Hari Das Thakur said that liberation and freedom from the reactions of sinful activities are only byproducts of chanting the holy name of the Lord. If one chants the holy name of the Lord purely, he attains the platform of loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In this regard, Haridas Thakur gave the example comparing the power of the holy name to sunshine. A slokera artakara pandite ragana sabbe kahe tu me kahe arta vivarana. He placed the verse before all the learned scholars present, but the learned scholars asked him to state the purpose of the verse. Hari dasa kehena yache, sureva udaya, 
Udiyan Haiti Arambe Tamera Haya Shaya. Haridas Thakur said that as the sun begins to rise, it dissipates the darkness of night, even before the sunshine is visible. Charaprita Raksasa Dira Vayahaya Nasa Udahaila Dharma Karma Ari Parakasa. Before the sunrise even takes place, the light of dawn destroys the fear of the dangers of the night, such as disturbances by thieves, ghosts, and rakshasas. And when the sunshine actually appears, one engages in his duties. Ache Namo Dada Rambe Papa Adira Shaya Udaya Kali the Krishna Pada Haya Premadoya. Similarly, even before one's chanting of the holy name is pure, one is freed from all sinful reactions. And when he chants purely, he becomes a lover of Krishna. Mukti tu chipalahaya nama pasa hoite, ye mukta bhakta nalaya, say Krishna chaya dite. A devotee never accepts mukti, even if Krishna offers it. Mukti, freedom from all sinful reactions, is attained even by namabhas, or a glimpse of the light of the holy name before its full light is perfectly visible. The namabhas stage is between that of namaparat, or chanting of the holy name with offenses, and pure chanting. There are three stages in chanting the holy name of the Lord. In the first stage, one commits 10 offenses of chanting while, 10 offenses while chanting. In the next stage, Namabhas, the offenses have almost stopped and one is coming to the platform of pure chanting. In the third stage, when one chants the Hare Krishna mantra without offenses, his dormant love for Krishna immediately awakens this is the perfection. Omagyan to Mirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unamitam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Veda Maha. The Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale. Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste Saraswati Deva Gaudavani Pachari Nanya Vishesa Sunya Vari. Asyatya de Satari may Vanchakalpa to Rubisja. Vipa Sindhu, Bay Vicha, Petitanan, Pavane Bio, Vaishnavi Bio, Namaho Namaha. Vanchakalpa to Rubisja, Vipa Sindhu, Bay Vicha, Petitanan, Pavane Bio, Vaishnavi Bio, Namaho Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Babu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadahar, Srivasadi Gaur, Vakavindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So using that example done by Srila Haridas Thakur, as when the sun starts to take uh, its uh, rising and it's getting to the horizon, the sun is always in its orbit. The sun is always light. The sun is not free. The sun is free from sundown and sun up. There's no such thing as sundown and sun up for the sun. The sun is always in its orbit. From our perspective, we see the sun in different uh, in different positions in its orbit. So sometimes it's below the surface. Sometimes it's rising to the surface of the horizon, and sometimes it's sitting in the midst of the, the beautiful sky and sometimes it is going down so when it's rising up and it's not even being seen yet there is the glimmer of light that comes above the horizon and one can immediately say oh the sun is soon to appear but the light of the sun appears before the sun appears so the light of the sun is the energy of the sun and the light of the sun also has many benefits. But when the sun fully comes, the benefits are fully given. You can't get, you can't get much heat from the light of the sun. 
and when the sun is still below the horizon. But when the sun is above the horizon, then the full power of the sun's heat becomes available. So in the same way, when we, in the process of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, there are benefits that occur during the process of development. And in using the analogy of the sun going up with the horizon, material benefits and liberation are like that light before the sun appears. So, um, bhukti and mukti, using the example of Govarmanda Thakur, who sp speaks this beautiful verse uh, that uh, because I'm engaged in pure devotional service to the Lord, Bhukti and Mukti stand with folded hands ready to serve me. So what we're, what we're hearing is that the real benefit or the ultimate benefit and the goal of chanting of the holy name of the Lord is to awaken one's natural, intrinsic, internal love for the Lord. Nityasiddha, Krishna Prema, Saru Kabunoi, Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte, Kodiye Udoi. In the heart of all living entities, no, no matter what body that living entity is possessing, whether it's a demigod or it's an insect, in the heart of that living entity, there is pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The chanting of the holy name has been given special preference in this age of Kali as the means to awaken that love. Of course, there are other activities which supplement and support the chanting of the holy name, which are also required. But the holy name of Lord, a Lord is like the, the sun of our love for Krishna. When it arises within the, in our minds and within our hearts, then we have understood everything and there's nothing else to aspire for. You have achieved perfection. There is, no per, there is nothing else in life that has any meaning or any importance. <laughs> in other words, yeah, when, when you are sitting and eating a very, your favorite meal and there's like maybe 25 preparations in that meal and every one of the ones are your some of your favorite preparations um, all you can do is absorb yourself in it and experience the happiness and the variety of the satisfaction that's given by the various tastes coming from the different foodstuffs i remember when i would travel to mexico when in the year 2004, I traveled to Mexico. And they have a tradition of cooking. One, there was one family that would cook. We were invited to their home. And lunch was no less than 25 preparations. And sometimes it would go up to 40 just for lunch. And so being new to Mexico and being new to many of the tastes of the Mexican food, it was just a delight to experiment with all the different flavors and all the different varieties. And um, so it was an experience and it's something that causes one to become absorbed in. <laughs> so, uh, and if you go to Fiji, Fiji's even more so. I think every lunch is 50 preparations. And if a sannyasi comes, they, they cook 108 for his lunch. And so if you're a sannyasi, be careful if you go to Fiji because uh, you would be ready to uh, you know, you know, perform the austerity of, <laughs> of taking prasadam. <laughs> but I'm using this as an example to say that when one experiences the love of God when the, the bright sun of one's loving relationship shines within the heart and mind of the devotee, then there's nothing else. Nothing else is there. No one, you don't aspire for anything else. Everything is complete. It is perfect. 
And that is the power and the efficacy and the position of chanting Krishna's holy name. It awakens that love. And therefore, Haridas Thakur explains the different stages, Nama Parad, Nama Bas, and Sudanam, the three stages of chanting of the holy names of the Lord. In the Nam Aparad stage, the chanting is done with offense, and therefore one can hardly taste the happiness of chanting. It can, can also become quite difficult when one is chanting with offenses. But that doesn't mean one should give up the chanting because there is a lack of taste, or still, if one still is honeycombed with offenses, that there is a reason to give up. No. Prabhupada said, just go on chanting, just go on chanting and, and try to avoid the offenses. And gradually, gradually, you'll come to the stage of Nama Vas. Nama Vas is, the offenses have almost stopped. The major offenses are eradicated and there's some traces of smaller offenses that are still lingering in the background. And there is the example. Nama Vas is a reflection of the sunlight through the clouds. Sometimes you see a cloudy sky during the day, but then you notice that somewhere in behind the clouds, there is the sun. And so the clouds move a little bit and a flash of that sunlight comes through the cloud. And there you say, oh, there comes the sun through the cloud. So that ray, of light is compared to Namabas, getting the ray of the actual pure sun, but only a small fraction of that, uh, that unlimited sunlight of the holy name. So when that, therefore, one continues to, to practice chanting and continues to engage in devotional service, and gradually, gradually, that sunlight of the holy name becomes more like a, a, a rising of the sun in the hearts and minds of the devotee. But we must add that um, although the holy name is perfect in itself, it requires that we follow the process as given by the spiritual master. Because <clears throat> the process itself is like uh, supportive. Just like if you're cooking, and you may be, um, you're, you're cooking in the frying pan. This is just a, a uh, very uh, simple example, maybe not a perfect example. You're cooking, you have, uh, um, you have everything you need to cook, but the gas is so low that you can't keep up the cooking process, but you're still cooking but it's taking so long. So, but when you have everything you need, then the process is working and you, you can continue following the protocol. And then eventually you have the finished preparation, what you desired. So in the same way that unless we follow the process given by the spiritual master, then the cooking as Srila Prabhupada said of a meal, or the chanting of the holy name is compared to cooking with smoke. If you try to cook with smoke, you might say, well, there's some fire there, yes, but it will take 300 years. So in the same way, um, we must support the process of chanting, which is the ultimate principle of awakening our love for Krishna with the process of devotional service. And of course, there are nine angas, and one can be perfect in all of them, but uh, one can be perfect by hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, uh, becoming a friend, surrendering everything, uh, worshiping, offering prayers, becoming a servant, the nine process of devotional service. But the acharyas, especially Srila Prabhupada writes, that it must accompany the chanting of the holy name of the Lord because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has endowed that chanting with all his full mercy. And therefore, 
Kali Yuga means, you know, Kaler Dosha Nidhi Rajan, Asti Eko Mahagunaha, in this age of Kali, that pure benediction to awaken one's love for Krishna comes in the form of these uh, 32 symbols, syllables, 16 words of chanting of the Maha Mantra. So the Maha Mantra is foremost supported by all of the other activities as given by one spiritual teacher in devotional service. And then the process is complete. If we just chant and we don't follow the rest of the process, we will be free from, a from some suffering in the material energy. But we will not get the benefit of the chanting, which is pure love of God. So uh, therefore one has to follow the process carefully. And therefore, on all levels, the chanting of the holy name awakens uh, our natural love for Krishna. And this is what this particular thing here, and just you go back to the verse itself. Uh, revisit the translation. <laughs> and you see here, even, a, even if one who is embarrassed by by hunger or falls down or stumbles, chants the holy name of the Lord even once, willingly or unwillingly, he is immediately free from the reactions of his past deeds. Mm -hmm. Example is uh, Ajamil, who was so sinful and so much a materialist, and he had committed so many sinful activities, causing much pain and suffering to other living entities in order to support his prostitute wife. He um, had no compunction of doing anything sinful. Uh, but uh, by Krishna's grace, because he had somehow or other had piety and devotion in his early part of his life, Krishna never forgot that. So Krishna arranged, and this is mentioned by Srila Prabhupada, that he, he named his last son Narayan, which is a name for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so at the time when death was coming to take him away, he was so attached to his son that he immediately called for his son for help. He called out to his son, Narayan, please come, save me. But when he called, he, he was actually calling the name of the Supreme Personality of God. And, and so he, he chanted Namabas. And because he did all of his sinful reactions, which he had accumulated for many decades, were completely wiped away. And he was free from being taken away by the agents of Yamaraj who came to take him away and bring him for further punishment for his sinful activities. The, Yamara, the Yamadudis, the uh, servants of Yamaraj, were stopped. You'll be coming to this, uh, this particular pastime in the upcoming canto, canto six. So you'll be, you're almost there. Uh, this is one of the most important uh, pastimes in the Bhagavatam because it shows the power and the mercy of Krishna's holy name that when the Lord, uh, when he chanted the Lord's name, he wasn't calling for the Lord, he was calling for his son. But because he chanted in a state of helplessness and when he chanted, he heard his own voice speak the name of his son, but the name of his son was also the name of the Supreme Lord. And so when he did that, he also remembered Narayan at the time of hearing his own voice. Not prior to that, as soon as the sound of his own voice came, he remembered Narayan. And all, and all of his sinful activities, as it says here, all the reactions from past deeds become immediately destroyed, even if one chants. Uh, and this is called, uh, this is called chanting, uh, what is it? It's called chanting, 
Um, it's namabas, but it's also called chanting unintentionally. Um, like sometimes people chant, you know, when they start laughing, they laugh at us. Say, ah, oh, you Hare Krishnas, you guys dress so funny. You look so funny with no hair and you got that ponytail in the background. So, so they say Hare Krishna and so they get some benefit. Or someone says, oh, you Hare Krishnas are just useless. You don't do any work. You know, you'll get a job. You're just living off society. So they, they criticize us in that way. Or uh, they may accidentally uh, chant the Hare, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's like you might be nailing a nail into a, a board and you slip and you hit your finger and you say, Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, so in this way, this is called accidental chanting of the holy name. This is what is being said here. Even if one does that, uh, immediately they get free from the reactions of their past deeds. So powerful Krishna's holy name and so merciful. That's the main point. It is, it is Karuna avatar. It is full of mercy. Mm -hmm. So one should never give up the chanting of the holy names of the Lord under any condition. I'll tell a story and I'll end this discussion with this particular story. And it's an interesting little tale. It's not a, it's, a, it's, it's an antidote, but it has a very powerful meaning. Sometimes devotees think, well, you know, I've been chanting for a long time and it's so difficult, so hard. And I could be using my time doing other things more useful. I'm going to give up this chanting. It's not getting me anywhere. Makes devotees, a devotee will think like that. And there are many examples. And so one devotee of one very powerful spiritual master, he was feeling like that. And so he went to his spiritual master and he said, Guru Maharaj, I'm sorry. I don't want to say this, but I, I don't see any benefit of me chanting anymore. I want to give it up. So his Guru Maharaj was very thoughtful, thinking of a way to he could convince his, his disciple otherwise. He said, all right, but before you give it up, uh, I want you to make one little experiment, a little service I have to, for you to do. Uh, go down by the river and you'll see that there are cranes there. Cranes are these big stork-like birds that stand on one leg and they uh, grab fish as the stream goes by. So I want you to go to this crane, get as close as you can without scaring him and say, Hare Krishna. And there's one particular crane, he comes every day. So you go to that crane and then he described where that crane goes. So he went to that crane, stood a distance away, said, Hare Krishna. And the crane started to shake and then it fell over and it died. So now he comes back to his spiritual master, tells him what happened. He's a little shocked. Spiritual master says, never mind. I have another service for you. Go, and um, there is the, the Goshala. And in that Goshala, there is a calf that, that has just been born. Just recently, within the last few moments, I got the news a calf was born. So go to that calf and stand a distance away and chant. Hare Krishna. So he goes by this newborn calf and he chants Hare Krishna. And the calf immediately starts to shake, rolls its eyes, falls over and dies right in the presence of its mother. 
Now he's really overwhelmed with anguish. He runs back to the spiritual master and says, reports what happens. Now he's quite shaken up. The spiritual master said, never mind. But I want you to do one more thing before you give up chanting. Um, the king in the local area, he is my disciple. He's an initiated disciple. He's actually your god brother. He just recently had a baby boy son who was just born. I want you to go and come to the king and tell him that you're our spiritual master is very happy when he wants to send his blessings to the newborn child. And you've come on behalf of him to give the blessings to the child. And when you do, you chant Hare Krishna. So he goes and the palace is in quite festive mood. Everyone is happy. The king has just had a son. The mother's there in the room with the baby. And the king is giving out, he's being congratulated by many of the members of the palace. He's also giving gifts. And then he comes, he gets a chance to see the king. And the king, uh, he says, I am your god brother. I, our spiritual master has sent to me to come. He has heard of your good fortune of receiving a, a new baby boy. And he wants to give blessings to the boy. So I've come on his behalf. King's very happy. Oh, okay. There, go in the room. The mother is there with the baby and uh, speak your blessing. So he goes in and he says, Hare Krishna. The baby shakes, rolls his eyes and falls over dead. <laughs> The mother is in complete shock. She can't believe what happens and she's overwhelmed with emotion. The word gets back to the king. The king is beyond himself with both grief and anger at the same time. He can't even think straight. He calls his guards and says, take this person away and torture him slowly. Give him a slow death. As soon as that happens, all of a sudden, the body of that baby appears in the sky above the king and of everyone else in the palace. And the soul out of that baby's body floats in the sky, looks down at everyone and looks at the boy and says, thank you very much. I was cursed to take three births, one as a crane, one as a calf, and one is a boy as the son of this king. Now I can go back to the spiritual world. Thank you very much. When everyone sees this, the whole atmosphere changes. Of course, the king is feeling, still feeling the loss of his son, but he's no longer angry at the boy. He can understand it was the mercy of his spiritual master to liberate that soul from its bondage in this material world. He goes back to his spiritual master, tells what happened. And the spiritual master says, you still want to give up chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamaj. Uh, no Guru Maharaj, never will I give it up. <laughs> now I am understood. So this is just a nice example of how powerful spirit. This, this story, although it's an antidote, does illustrate the power of the holy name. Once, just once, purely chanting the holy name, one can actually attain to the platform of pure uh, devotion to Krishna. One will be situated in pure devotional service. It is so powerful. And that's the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in this age, Although this age is such a bad age, it's, it's a very terrible age. <laughs> there are so many problems. The, the scriptures say, Kaler Dosha Nidhi Rajan, that this place is an ocean of faults. Kali Yuga is full with faults. But Asti Eku Mahagun, 
Echo means one, Maha means great, and Gun means benediction. There are one, there is one boon that is a Maha boon. It is the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, Kirtana Eva Krishna Sya. And what is the benefit? Mukta Sangam Param Bajev. One is freed from all reactions of all sinful activities and they can attain to the spiritual realm. The power of chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. It is so powerful and it is so direct. Srila Hari Das Thakur was challenged based on his statements on the glories of the holy name, but he proved beyond a doubt that the holy name is the glories of the holy name are simply a understatement of the actual glories of the holy name. One can never really understand how wonderful and how powerful and how merciful the holy name is. It is Krishna himself in his most magnanimous feature of compassion given to, him, given to us by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is Karuna avatar. Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gauda Tristana Maha Namo Mahavadanaya Vandanaya means magnanimous. He is the most magnanimous personality. He's come to give us the chanting of the holy name, which is the ultimate principle of compassion, mercy, and pure uh, devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So what we have here is something very precious. So keep it close to your heart. Any just, just like if you have something precious, you make sure you keep it close. If it's some material possession, you guard it carefully. You may even lock it up and put keys and even hide the keys. So this is something that we find something very precious. So this holy name should be kept very close to our to ourself in our life as the ultimate treasure of our life because the holy name alone is powerful enough to push back all of the effects of the age of Kali, the negative effects, and awaken one and bring one to transcendental consciousness and ultimately to return to the spiritual world. So yeah. And the benefits from the chanting of the holy name are mentioned here, but they are simply what we say, just like when you go to work um, and you go to work and you get some benefits for going to work, you get maybe some uh, uh, health care benefits or you get some uh, vacation during the year sometime. You don't go to work to get health benefits. You don't go to work to get a vacation. <laughs> The work, you go to work in order to get some remuneration for the activities you perform, but these things are added on as extra benefits. So mukti and bukti are simply material enjoyment and liberation are simply extras that are come by way of the chanting of the holy name. They are not the goal. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj, for this brilliant speech. Again, thank you so much for constantly reminding us the glories of Holy Name and how precious it is and how fortunate we are to have the such merciful, merciful giving of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And yet we struggle to chant, yet we don't have taste. Yet we are like struggling to complete even 16 rounds that Srila Prabhupada has given us. But thank you again for constantly reinforcing the importance of it, Maharaj. Um, devotees, if you have any realizations, reflections, concern, questions, please go ahead and ask them to Maharaj. Hare Krishna. And it'll be nice to see everyone. <laughs> yes, if you could kindly... Um, make yourself visible.
Anybody has any questions? Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dandor Pranam. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Maharaj, um, in the in Where the chance, uh, I'm in. Um, oh, there you go. I got okay. you now. Okay. Soon during. Uh, so Mar- go- yeah. Yes, uh, yes, Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, in the uh, translation of uh, verse nineteen. The real result of devotional service is awakening pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, uh, uh, you know, um, I have heard that, you know, uh, this is, this is of course, the, the, the final thing is devotional service awakens pure love. But when people have relationship problems, they don't address the relationship and they have... Um, they go to chanting as the solution to it. But, uh, you know, I, some of the classes that I heard where, um, where the speaker did mention that, you know, if you are having relationship problems, if you have emotional needs, you have to address them. Like the way you're hungry, you have to eat. Chanting will not eliminate your hunger. So if there are, you know, with kids or with um, family and all, but even there is a different um, um, set of devotee where, you know, they will say if there is any problem, we have to depend only on Krishna, only the holy name. So I want to know your thought on it. Yeah, I say do both. Chant the holy name and work on the problem simultaneously. Okay, got it. Yes. Um, that's, our, yeah. that's our philosophy because by chanting the holy name, you bring in the mercy of the Lord. And by using your intelligence, just like Arjuna was on the chariot. Now, Krishna was competent to win the battle without even Arjuna, but he used Arjuna as the means. And he told Arjuna, you have to fight. But your fighting is not the means for winning. That's my mercy. So we have to make, we have to combine the mercy of the Lord through taking shelter of the Lord and at the same time uh, address the problem in an intelligent and very, uh, what we say, clear way. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Uh, yeah, I got it. I, I had I have a follow-up with this. So um, when the, I had a discussion with the Mataji and she said, there is nothing like emotional needs or anything. We just have to depend on Krishna. So um, I wanted to know uh, how your say on this. How, well, that lady must be a pure devotee because if you're if when you're one who is a pure devotee, will simply depend on Krishna in all circumstances. Not that Krishna does something, but depending on Krishna also means getting the intelligence that comes by depending on Krishna. Depending on Krishna is not it's just not some some statement that just floats in the air. What does it mean to depend on Krishna? It means to uh, take shelter, pray to him, and ask for his guidance. And that comes in the form of intelligence. It comes in the form of Krishna doing something to to help one alleviate the situation. It can come in different forms. Depending on Krishna is just not something. What does it mean, depend on Krishna? I, I, I got it, Maharaj. I have heard Mahatma Prabhu's classes on spiritual bypassing. So I, I, was, I heard him and I, I have faith. But you know, when devotees uh, have a strong conviction, then I was like, I wanted to check it out with you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I should add one thing that if you just try to solve the problem without chanting or depending on Krishna, you're going to be spinning on the material level and you'll never come to any kind of real conclusion or solution. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you very both much. Are, both are required. And again, the example is there. Krishna told Arjuna, you got to fight. <laughs> yes. Yes, Maharaj. You have Thank to make you. the effort. But my mercy is the difference between victory and defeat. Yeah. Krishna yes, responds to our effort along with our prayer. Prayer is not idle. Prayer inspires one to move forward and do things. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.
you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Sri Devi Mataji. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Sri Devi Mataji, would you like to go ahead? Do we have Anuradha who's going to speak? No. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Krishna Maharaj. Sorry, Mataji, please go ahead. Oh, sorry. There's two Anuradhas online here, so. Oh, I'm, so <laughs> I'm so sorry. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much for the beautiful class and uh, very grateful for your association, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, when we hear about chanting, Maharaj, I have a doubt on this. Is it only the holy name? Because I, I don't remember exactly which purport, but I remember reading Srila Prabhupada's purport where Prabhupada says, reading my these books is also chanting. And I personally feel, you know, through, I mean, I'm talking for myself, Maharaj, that through Shrabanam, through hearing classes, I can get connected to Krishna much quicker than, is Maharaj online? I don't see him. I mean, I'm him? there. Okay, sorry, Maharaj, I couldn't see you. Yes. I could see Mataji. Yeah, so, yeah, so Maharaj, for me, when I hear a beautiful class like this one, it is much easier for me to connect. It's, it's like, it takes moments to get connected to Krishna. I mean, whatever level, wherever I am, then to through chanting, you know, well, chanting, I, my mind is everywhere, but I'm much absorbed when I'm listening to a class or rather reading a book where Srila Prabhupada writes beautiful, beautiful purpose. And I remember, I mean, and our nine process also starts with Shravanam. Are they part of chanting, Maharaj, when we say chanting or chanting is just the holy name? Mm. Well, we're referring to the holy name in this particular discussion, but there are, there are many mantras also that we chant. We chant pranam mantras to the spiritual master. We chant Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mantra, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinoda. Mantra is powerful. Mantra invokes the essence of the mantra into our consciousness. And it actually brings about some type of uh, activity, some kind of result. Mantra alone, when it's chanted properly, uh, can actually uh, perform, it performs activities by itself, makes things happen. You see that great yogis, just by mantras, they can travel from one place to another by the power of mantra. Mantra is very powerful. And, uh, and even if it's chanted improperly, still, there is still some benefit from the chanting of the mantra. Yeah, so I'm, I somehow, I think I didn't get the, the gist of your question. Yes, Maharaj, uh, the, the thing is like, Prabhupada writes in the purport of um, Srimad Bhagavatam, I believe Canto 1, that, you know, this reading of scripture is also chanting. So how do we understand that, Maharaj? Yeah, but he gave both and take his instructions completely. He said, we have to chant, we have to read also. So chant, reading scripture is chanting the glories of the Lord. <laughs> yes, yes, Maharaj. I, I yeah. just wanted to give that clarification. Thank you yeah. so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Shri Devi Mataji, Chat did you have any questions? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Let's let's go with the devotees in Charlotte first, and then the devotees that come on second. The devotees from my group they can come on at the end. We'll give the Charlotte devotees first preference. That's why I'm here for the Charlotte devotees today. But everyone <laughs> should can, can participate. Okay, Chaturbhuj, Chaitanya. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Tandvat Pranam, Maharaj. Uh, so blessed, Maharaj, by hearing your nectarian words on this topic of chanting of the Holy Names, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, I have uh, this uh, confusion. Uh, Maharaj, that uh, uh, we have heard from many devotees that uh, the chanting will bring good result if uh, simultaneously we develop good understanding about the Holy Name, our relationship or the mood, how should we chant and Simultaneously, we also hear that devotees say that uh, 16 rounds is not enough for us. Uh, we have to not just neglect services, but also we have to chant more. So I just wanted uh, the clarification, Maharaj, that should we increase our chanting and simultaneously develop our understanding more by reading 
Prabhupada books and hearing about the holy name or is it like that if we chant minimum 16 rounds and we go on that part of developing our understanding by hearing about the holy name and reading scriptures will that be the way on this? well if you examine carefully Srila Prabhupada's instructions you'll find there are apparently in the context that is being said there is certain instructions that apply but then you have to see what is the broader instructions that are they're more common and more prominent therefore when you carefully hear Srila Prabhupada's lectures but mostly in his books the principle is satatam kirtayan tomam it means to chant 24 hours a day now that doesn't necessarily mean just a maha mantra that means chanting the glories of the lord 24 hours a day that's the dui so whether we're singing kirtan or hearing from Srimad bhagavatam or speaking bhagavatam that is also chanting that was the essence of the question that we heard before so everything is contained in the glorification of the Lord, but the essence of the glorification as given by Srila Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to chant the holy name Maha Mantra. And so when you read Srila Prabhupada's instructions in his books, he's always encouraging the devotees to chant more because uh, it works this way. When you get a taste for chanting, automatically you want to chant more. So if you're actually chanting properly, you'll increase. It'll just happen automatically. It's like if you're if something is, is good, you want more of it. <laughs> something is sweet, you want more of it. <laughs> so yeah, but there are different types of devotees. So there are different devo there's other devotees who may want to read and study more and more and chant just 16 rounds. There are devotees who want to chant more and more and still read and study. So one, one may balance one way or the other, but both are doing the same in the sense they're all, they're both glorifying the Lord. And that's the essence. Thank you so much Maharaj for this. You have to, you have to find what attracts you the most. <laughs> but the problem, sometimes the problem is we get attracted to everything, and then, <laughs> then, <Yeah>. we, <laughs> then we just, well, I don't have enough time. <laughs> and then that's the ticket back home, back to Godhead, when we have no time for material life. <laughs> That's the principle of the Goswamis. The Goswamis, it didn't, it, it, it's not that they, you know, they just forgot to eat. They forgot to sleep. <laughs> they were just too busy engaged in devotional service. So we want, we want to come to that level of becoming more attracted to the activities and devotional service, which will lead us to uh, more and more devotional activities. Okay. Thank you, Lawrence. We have Mr. Kavi Kanapur. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj and Pranam Maharaj. Thank you very much for your lecture, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, I have a question. Uh, I read one purport of Srila Prabhupada. I've forgotten the purport now because I read it very long time ago. And uh, the Prabhupada mentioned there that uh, for us to, to go back to the, to the spiritual world, we have to reach the level of Ashakti, whether in chanting or reading, whatever. So, and a Ruchi is before Ashakti. So my question is that even if you have developed taste and there is no attachment, is it possible that one develops taste and there is no attachment? Because it's two different levels, Maharaj. Arushi, then Achakti. So please, can you explain, explain more on this, Maharaj? Thank you. Well, Ruchi is preliminary to a Shakti. Shakti is a, a higher stage. So when Ruchi develops, it'll, when it matures, 
there's the, when ruchi first begins, it's not a shakti, but as it develops, it matures, it becomes more intense. Then it moves automatically into a shakti. So yeah, when a shakti develops, that's that's well, that is firm attachment for hearing the glories of the Lord, for chanting the glories of the Lord, just for engaging uh, fully in the service of the Lord. But a shakti contains ruchi, obviously. <laughs> the previous stages are included in the next stage <laughs> automatically. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Danbet Pranams. Um, Maharaj, I have one question. Um, this is, um, I was wondering, um, Maharaj, you just said that the uh, great devotees like, um, you know, the Sad Goswamis and other great devotees, they were engaged in devotional service and, you know, they didn't have much of material demands and things like that. So I was like wondering, um, I mean, Haridas Thakur, we know he was engaged in chanting like the whole day. And how, about the other devotees, were they engaged in like, you know, writing books or, uh, I mean, yeah. I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the Goswamis, that was their bhajan. Their bhajan was to write books. Mm -hmm. They would gather every morning at the beginning of the day and sit and discuss their activities of their writings amongst each other and plan out the day and then then begin their services. They were, yeah, so that's the type of devotional expression, writing books. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's bhajan, that's that's called shravana. Travanam, no, it's called Kirtanam, I'm sorry. Writing is Kirtanam. You're putting, you're putting sound vibrations on paper for, for others to read, therefore you're, speak, you're speaking something and that's Kirtanam. And when they read it, that's Travanam. <laughs> Thank you, Mara. So were they also involved in other kinds of devotional service or? It was made yeah, they, yeah, they arranged for the building of temples. You know, Rupa Goswami was connected with the Govindaji temple. Uh, Jiva Goswami, Radha Damodar, Sanatan Goswami, Madan Mohan. Uh, were the other uh, who else? Uh, Opa Bhakta Goswami Radha Raman Temple. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami wasn't so much in Raghunath Bhatta, Raghunath Das Goswami, neither one of them were connected with temple buildings, but Raghunath Das Goswami was engaged in writing books. So Thank you. building temples was another one of their activities. <laughs> or in commissioning rich people to engage their money and time in constructing these beautiful temples for the for the worship of the Lord. Sure, Mara. So that gives me a clearer idea. Like they were also engaged in, you know, some kind of uh, transcendental uh, business dealings with outsiders, perhaps, like um, devotional people who were, um, um, you know, um, ready to um, give Lakshmi donations for the temples and things like that, right? Well, if you read the history, you'll find that they never, they never facilitated that. 
Pfizer. The only one that ever, the only one that facilitated that was um, let's see who was that um, that was uh, I think it was yeah Raghunath Das Goswami he he wanted to excavate the uh, play, make it make a nice bathing places for uh, Radha and Krishna and so he commissioned one rich person to give his money in that and that's the only example the other ones mm -hmm. were they, they didn't these uh, these rich people came to them and saw that they these were great saints and so they offered to do some service I think Sanatan Goswami was uh, one. What was it one? Uh, the story is that one very rich mer merchant. He was a salt merchant. He was carrying a large quantity of salt on his boat, and he got stuck on a barge, and so he couldn't take his boat out. It was stuck. So he came to, I think, a Sanatana or Rupa Goswami, I think it was. And he asked, you know, for some mercy. The Lord told him, you build a temple for the, and then Krishna will free your, your, your ship. <laughs> and so he used all his wealth to build, I think it was you know, Madan Mohan's temple. And, uh, and then after he did it, you know, his, Ship got free. <laughs> so the only one we know is Raghunath Das Goswami when he asked that one rich merchant to use his money to uh, to, to renovate uh, Shamakun and Radhakun, which had been somewhat lost to uh, time. But they didn't usually, they didn't associate with worldly minded people, not at all. They stayed away from that. Mm -hmm. you, the, the, the song of the six Goswamis. What is that one? Uh, Dira, what is it? Uh, I can't remember that one verse. Let me think. Mm. One beautiful verse. Uh, Gopi Bhatta Bhatta Kamala. No, it's, the word tuchava means insignificant. Mandala Pati means aristocratic people. And tuchava means insignificant. So they saw, they gave up. They gave up the association of wealthy people, just like one gives up stool after they leave the bathroom. <laughs> Mandalapati Sadin Sadat Tuchava. Tuchava means insignificant. They didn't consider associate, they considered that kind of association useless and insignificant. Mandalapati, big, big. Jaminders, big, big, wealthy people. So that's that's a glorification of one of their qualities. Because Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami were uh, employed by the government of Hussein Shah for a long time. They were government ministers, but they gave it up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. I was just wondering, you know, there were huge Rathyatra festivals uh, conducted and organized during Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time. And I'm sure, I mean, there was a lot of effort going into coordinating those. And of course, like, um, you know, Lakshmi was involved, a lot of even other seva, like cooking yeah. and, you know, other devotee services, like to make that it was convenient. King, that was for the Rathyatra during Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That was King Pratipuruddha. Mm -hmm. who was attracted to Lord Chaitanya. So, but the Rathiyatra festival 
was a daily affair for Lord Jagannath. So it wasn't like a special occasion that was made to happen. It was a regular a yearly program to glorify the pastime of Lord Jagannath. So there was nothing extra about that festival. When we do it in the West, it's extra. <laughs> when I do it in Pori, it's tradition. <laughs> So I'm uh, sorry, uh, I'm getting the idea that the uh, Goswamis and the elevated devotees, they, uh, you know, stayed away from any kind of material yeah. healing and things like that. Yeah, if you read that verse, Taktvatu Namashesha Mandala Pati Siddhing Siddha. This is spoken by Srinivasacharya. Mm -hmm. The prayers of the, to the six Goswamis, I think it's verse number four or six, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. one of those verses. It says they gave up the association of aristocratic people as being insignificant. Everyone seeks out some kind of prestige that comes by associating with such big worldly people, but the Goswami saw it as being just a insignificant. But when these people came to want to offer service, they engaged them in service. Yeah, but they didn't like manage it or anything like that, right? No, they weren't, the, they weren't managing it, no. <laughs> they stayed with their bhajans. <laughs> thank you so much, Maharaj. I, thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hello. We have a question in the chat where Mataji is probably asking, Hare Krishna Maharaj, is it okay to chant while hearing Bhagavatam class? <laughs> Unless you're a pure devotee, it's okay. But if you're not, you're not going to be able to concentrate on both at the same time. <laughs> If you're a pure devotee, you don't see any difference. <laughs> but for us, it's not recommended. Concentrate on one or the other. Prabhupada would answer that way. When you're chanting, chanting. If you're listening to Bhagavatam, then do that. <laughs> I'm sure that's how Prabhupada would answer it. <laughs> Is that okay, Nitya Leela? She writes okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I think Nitya Leela is a pure devotee, so I'm maybe it doesn't apply. <laughs> so, Maharaj, uh, I I know that we shouldn't chant, but uh, sometimes it so happens that in the morning you are hearing something. Uh, since you are very low in your consciousness, you want to hear something, but uh, you you delay the chanting. Like especially, I delay the chanting because I want to exclusively chant. So I sometimes think that if I parallelly chant, then I might uh, get the taste for chanting also, and I'll finish sooner than uh, all the time delaying to exclusively. <laughs> I think you should ask your husband. I'm sure he can help you with that one. <laughs> He'll give you a clear understanding. <laughs> I guess you're asking me because I'm more in a neutral position, but <laughs> but I'm sure he has the the uh, the uh, the insight of how that works. <laughs> Yes, just I just because I I'm I'm so fallen that I keep delaying to just to exclusively chant. I don't even get to my rounds because I want to exclusively chant. So that is another you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm going more down rather than uh, you, I, I, you know doing it better. Just you, because you just I, want you just I, want to chant. That's all you want to do. Yeah, I try to do exclusive chanting, but then I start very late sometimes and uh, it gets delayed you know by evening and also i don't even chant in the morning because i i feel that okay i shouldn't do parallelly and so even if it's not our rounds some extra rounds but uh, is it okay to chant just to you know 
get started or uh, yeah so. yeah that's fine <laughs> okay okay thank you maharaj yeah that's fine that's 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 devotion okay thank you Yeah, I think we can go to Sri Devi now. She's patiently waiting. <laughs> or maybe just waiting. <laughs> no, delightful to hear all these uh, questions and the wonderful questions and the super wonderful answers, Guru Maharaj. Every moment is nectar. And I'm grateful for every word emanating from your lotus mouth. Thank you so much. Guru Maharaj, my question is about bhukti and mukti, where it says over here that bhukti and mukti just accompany uh, devotional service and are waiting to serve. So how can a devotee understand, supposing some material opulence comes a devotee's way, how do we know that we can use that in Krishna's service or it is a test of maya who's just presenting something to see Will they fall for it? Will they try to enjoy it? And oh, so if it's a test of, if it's coming, if it's coming, then use it in, de in devotional service and then you pass the test. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, whatever comes, use it in Krishna service and you can't go wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. You make everything so clear. My humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. There's one question in the chant, uh, in the chat. How to increase concentration while chanting? Hmm. There's a nice book by Sachi Nandana Maharaj called The Living Name. Get that book and read it. It'll give you many, many um, hints on how to Increase the quality of your uh, hearing, increasing the ability to your attention. Um, that book is, he deals with different aspects of that from different angles. So there's something for everybody in that book. It's called The Living Name. It's, it's become quite popular in devotional circles now. Um, one of the tips that he gives, which is very helpful in my chanting is, he always says, concentrate fully on the first Hare in the mantra. He said, when you do that, then it's, it becomes more natural and easy to hear the rest of the mantra. So bring in that first Hare to complete attention. That's one. And the other thing is shut off your cell phone. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> the Mahatma Prabhu has put a nice book together called Japa Affirmations. It gives 20 different hints on how to increase the quality and devotional mood of our chanting. That book is, is one of, it covers everything. So these two, Living Name and Japa Affirations, both of them are really, really, uh, there's books worth, these books are worth studying and practicing. But you should always remember that devotion to Krishna is the principle of chanting. The techniques will help to bring about devotion, but unless devotion actually becomes, you know, actually becomes part of your chanting. So uh, Prabhupada gives us two points. He said, chant very clearly and hear the sound vibration. And chant in the mood of a child calling for its mother. That means in a mood of helplessness.
Um, these two things Prabhupada emphasized over everything. Clear chanting and helpless uh, calling. And calling, chanting helplessly really indicates our position because this material world is a dangerous place. And we are also, you know, have a tendency towards material life. So we want to get out of that tendency. We want to come back to Krishna. So we're being dragged in one sense by material life. And we're trying, we're praying to Krishna, please pick me up from this. Ayi nanda tanuja kinkaram patitam man vishyame bhagam budo vipaya tavapada pankaja stita duli sadrisham vichantaya. So this verse is on the level of ashakti or attachment to the Lord and should be chanted. Occasionally, either during the time we're chanting or maybe at the beginning, to reconnect our consciousness to the mood of depending on Krishna to pick us up from this material struggle. Any further questions for Maharaj? Any reflections, concerns? Okay. Okay, thank you. I think we have exhausted the time period. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much and I look forward to meeting you again. As time moves on, something that never stands still is time. It's always moving. And we are moving with the time. Unless we have developed pure Krishna consciousness, then we are not affected by time. And time is just a feature of the material energy and it doesn't have any influence on the devotee. Okay, if no further questions, we can end the call then. Mancha Kalpata